you ever wonder if you have any gifts that God can use? Or maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you think, I have some amazing skills and abilities that God really needs. Either way, today's episode is for you. Today we're talking about why God gives us gifts and how they're not so much for our good, but for His glory. God's given every single one of us passions, abilities, talents. And we sometimes call these gifts. For some of you, that might be skateboarding or other cool sports. Or maybe your gift is dance. Or maybe your gift is in fashion. My friend Jessica started a company called Noonday Collection who created this beautiful piece here. And what she does is she goes into third world countries and employs women to create jewelry that she can then sell in North America. And this is just one example of how she's used her unique gifts to serve God. Throughout the past um, oh, five, six years has been a very trying period of my life. And um, I had been a mom with young kids and that has kind of taken over all of my life and my identity and who I was and uh, things happened. Trees came up, <laughs> shadows blocked the path. And I had to really discover who I was outside of these roles that I'd created for myself and the path that I had for myself. So just through God working through things and opening doors that I'd have never seen, um, and through the art that I've always done my whole life, he's just opened up new ways for me to connect with people and to minister through art and just things I'd never have even imagined that could happen. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just been an amazing expression and a way to connect with what God's put inside of me outside of my roles in, as a mom or a friend or whatever else. What I want for people to experience um, my art is, is part of the process leading up to it. So as I'm preparing for whatever the piece is supposed to be about or what the theme is, and I'm praying over those sketches that the, the brush strokes, that the lines would be God's lines and that it would connect with one person who's there and each time it's been amazing to, to hear a, personal, a person reflect on the experience that they saw or the things that they felt while the picture's happening. And those are things that I can't plan when I plan a picture or I can't sketch out. But it's, and that's where I know that it's God painting through me because he's connecting with a piece of that person, a piece of their story through the painting that I'm doing. So I can't plan those things, but it's, it's always that hope that one person will connect with something in that picture that God wanted to communicate to them.
Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about how we're all a part of the body of Christ. And every part of that body is needed in order for it to work well together. Imagine a body without a hand or without the liver, there would be trouble. The same thing is true with each of us and our unique gifts. When we all bring our skills and abilities together for His good, we can change the world. I'm a professional model and actor. I've been doing it for, well I've been, I got into modeling when I was 13 and then uh, I've been acting professionally for the past five years, yeah, I would say five, six years. There are definitely aspects uh, I enjoy and also aspects that are challenging. Um, when God has gifted you with something and put something, uh, given you a talent, uh, obviously you want to be able to do it to the best of your ability. Um, and uh, I would say some of the challenges that prohibit me from doing that are some sometimes moral conflicts um, with certain things that they might want on set that just I'm not willing to do uh, or compromise my standards for. Uh, I think it's important for every actor to determine what they uh, are comfortable with and what they're not uh, for every actor that's different. For me, I definitely know uh, what that is and what that isn't. Depending on what production is shooting or whatever, um, I will go in for, to an audition and then maybe they'll come back to me, you know, uh, with some rated R stuff that they want to do. And uh, I just have to be very forthcoming and say I'm not willing to do that. That's not part of what I want to do. Um, and the nice thing about it is you usually find out before the audition or just right after so you don't as an actor waste their time either because that's the last thing I'd want to do is just um, you know have them hire me and then be like oh actually I'm not doing that and then waste everybody's time and money and um, but yeah I would say uh, modeling there's not as much of a conflict because um, I think that I'm not international so a lot of models who are international probably have to deal with certain things more. Um, I'm more into the acting side of, of things. Uh, the modeling part, I would say starting from a young age, um, can kind of give you, you start seeing your body image through a certain lens that maybe isn't healthy. As you get older and stronger in who you are, you um, realize the discrepancies in the way you're viewing yourself and the way you're treating yourself because you think maybe you're not what you're supposed to be. Um, and uh, yeah, as you get stronger in who you are, you realize that you have to readjust some of those uh, standards that you're putting on yourself and just love yourself unconditionally. How I've kept myself grounded through um, my years of acting, well definitely Joe, my husband, has helped a lot with that. Um, it's the people you surround yourself with. Um, sometimes when I'm like on set living the life and like people are bringing me coffee, I'm like, oh I could get used to this. And then the next day I go back to like serving and I'm serving coffee to other people. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that, that keeps you down to earth. And as far as like, you know, when I get into character or whatever um, and I, I start uh, just contributing all my energy to playing that part. Um, I guess once they say cut, it's kind of, 
it's kind of easy to snap out of that because then you have like 50 million other people coming around and changing things on set. Uh, I know there's some method actors that just stay into character the whole time, but um, that's not that's not how I do it. Once the cameras roll, I'm just I everything kind of zones out and and I'm just in that scene and you have to believe that there's nothing else going on but that scene in that moment and that to me is is contributing to the beauty of the integrity of the story and that's why I fell in love with acting is a story and um, just bringing to life people's story and people's experiences and stuff. I think that as a model um, you definitely have to there's a lot of expectations on you to obviously um, fulfill the client's request. Whenever they hire you, they want you to, you know, look good in their clothes because you want they want people to want to buy them. So that's definitely a part of it. Um, is just doing that to the best of your ability. Uh, outside of that, there can be a lot of un unwanted expectations people put on you for like appearance and just like the feeling that you always have to be perfect or whatever. And I think just knowing who you are regardless of, of what people think or say about you is, is an essential survival tool for this industry. Um, because, you know, I kind of got, I used to care so much what people thought and then I kind of got to a place where I'm just like, you know what, I'm me and I'm gonna just be confident regardless of what people think and say about me. Shrouded in darkness, hidden in the shadows Fear knock, knock, knocks at my door Crouching under covers in a lonely grave I shudder, shudder Then I remember there's a secret weapon To fight the terrors of the night Arising out of blackness in a When I say your name, it's like turning the light on, turning the light on, darkness flees. Your name is like a roaring fire in this cold, cold night. Covered in feathers, hidden in the shadow of the shelter of Hi, my name is Christy Sidwell. 
I'm the director of Vastorix Dance Studio. We are a program of Youth for Christ, and uh, we minister to all kids of all different backgrounds and all different uh, financial statuses within Winnipeg. Um, a passion of ours is to teach students so that they can sharpen their skills, but not only that, to give them opportunities to share their skills. And one of my favorite things is taking our performance team out to the Dominican every other year. And when we go, we meet with all kinds of people that don't speak English. And um, we are able to find a commonality in the passion of dance and allowed to go deeper, um, we're allowed to go deeper by experiencing faith through movement. Dances can express sadness, um, they can express challenge, they can express joy, um, they can express all kinds of things and when a choreographer begins, uh, the stories can be very elaborate. And we are profoundly moved by watching how our dances with no language in specific can really impact the heart of a whole community and that they can resonate and understand the truths of who God is through a dance. It was choreographed about a year ago um, during a time that I really felt like God was testing my faith and just um, teaching me how to trust Him more. Um, I had recently had a back injury, so I wasn't able to dance, which is something that was really, really hard on me, to say the least. And yeah, he was just showing me like trust in his promises, trust that like everything will be okay. But I felt really blinded by it, and like I couldn't really get past that burden. So in the piece, they they cover their eyes a lot. They just have their hand there a lot, and it's sort of the difference between having blind trust versus having actual faith. And one of the verses that he had put on my heart is Hebrews 11.1. 1. Um, and now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So I, I just had to be sure in that time that God had a greater plan for me and that I, I, he knows better than I did. And yeah, to just trust in his promises. The thing that's so special about dance for me is that like it's a communication but it's so much more than words and like it's like 3D like you hear the music and that's really powerful and you see the movement and the dynamics and like like even watching or dancing it's so powerful then you feel it like in your heart and not just words it's it's so much more than that I think dance is so powerful because <laughs> um like the way it affects people is so strong. Recently I danced in my church and I think that affected people in a great way and God used it a lot and I got lots of good feedback. I got a card from a lady. She uh, told me how much she appreciated that we came and danced and because she was elderly, like she wouldn't have been able to dance herself but she could experience our story and our worship. She could like have that together with us. That was cool. To me, dance is what I use to show people God in the world, and I think that sometimes our gifts and our talents can be our voice instead of just talking, and we can express God's love in a different way to people, and they can see it in a different way instead of just hearing people talk about it and stuff. We all make mistakes, and even though we're not perfect, we're still loved. And um, the poem that was in that what I danced to, it was, I wrote it one night after I was thinking about this song I heard on the radio. And the song was asking the listeners to remember only their best moments instead of their screw ups. And for some reason, I just, I didn't agree with that because if you can't remember where you've come from, how can you see the growth that you went through and all the beautiful things that you've learned? I'm not perfect. I often make mistakes, but at the end of the day, I'm still growing and I'm learning and I'm okay with that. It's always easier, isn't it, to start mid-sentence or hop on a train mid-ride or fall in love mid-story. It's easier, isn't it, to love without the cost, to go to sleep and not go looking for the lost, 
to become so intoxicated with nothingness that you are too indifferent to need a savior. It's easier to be filled with disgust than to be vulnerable and love a little. Easier to forget the pain, go get drunk a little with some guy, than sit in that church pew and cry. It's easier at first, isn't it, to stand with the crowd and scream, Equal rights, people. Love is love. Shouting with the world, you darn Christians, you have no right to judge. It's easier, I think, to be in the gray than stand in the harsh light of black and white. To ride that high, get in that high school fight, hit the pavement, and two hours later, die. It's easier. The world is screaming it with all that they are, but my Jesus didn't die on a cross so that I could live in this kind of messed up getting by. My Jesus died for me so that I could thrive, so that I could be alive, not get that joint and go from low to high, low to high, low to high. No, let me tell you, it wasn't a walk in the park. My Jesus saw me in my brokenness, my selfishness, and my altogether ruthless messiness in my humanness and loved me. He came into my sticky grime and he brought the blinding sunshine. And it felt so good to finally see the sun in all of its glory and then realize my utter need for him, shouting, Jesus, just hold me. And that's what he did. That's exactly what he did. He got on that cross and paid for every single dirty thing that I ever did. Great grace abounds into my bloody soul, unconditional love and a soft hand to hold. That old man, that easy life, the one filled with torturous, agonizing strife was lifted from my shoulders the day my savior died. To realize that on that day, it was not he who needed saving, but I. And I let those easy things slip away as I gaze into my lover's eyes. What abounding love, what overcoming grace is this, that you gave yourself and made a way for me to know you. Wow. So I let that easy life go and pick up my cross to follow the lover of all loves I know who loved me first. He has forever quenched my thirst. This spring, this well, I come to the feet of Jesus and simply rest. And I don't even have to put him to the test because he's already come through, even before I asked him to. I just sit at his feet and drink the living water of the Most High God. I leave my easy life, which was actually a fraud, and fall into the arms of the one who knows me well. I'm in love. I'm in love with you, God, and you have taken the things that so easily entangle me and destroyed them with the ultimate substitutionary sacrifice. God, you paid the highest price for me, a sinner unclean. So now I stand made whole, righteous by his blood, receiving Holy Spirit like a glorious flood. I am seated at his right hand. I am singing. I am shouting this truth that that easy life could never stand. That Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. So I'll praise the one who took my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Can't you hear him? He's calling. He's shouting to you, I loved you first. I loved you first. I loved you first. Even when you were covered in dirt, I loved you first. Even when you bleed and it hurts, I loved you first. Rest in my easy love. Look above this world to my love. Rest and fall into my easy love because it's so easy, love. I loved you first, love. Take it easy, love. It's so easy to fall in love. So how does our perspective change when we remember that we're daughters of God? Well, instead of worrying so much about how much skill we have, whether or not we can be the very best, we're more concerned with being faithful with what God's given us. In the Bible, there's a story about a man who had just a very little bit, but when he was faithful with that, God said, well done, now I'm gonna put you in charge of more. And always remember that our value has nothing to do with our skills and abilities. That's something that we've been given because we were created in God's image and we're His children.
This is Yura. At a young age, he started attending the Shelter Plus Community Center, where he experienced love and acceptance and heard about Jesus. Today, at the age of 21, he is a follower of Christ and is eager to share the good news with others. With this in mind, our Ukrainian ministry partner, Shelter Plus, has created two new ministry projects. Golden Words, Your Version, is a humorous three-minute radio segment that shares wise and inspirational quotes from the Bible and well-known Christians. Producers like Yura take to the streets asking regular, everyday people to finish the first part of a phrase. They feature 10 or so of the most interesting and surprising responses on the program, followed by a ministry moment as the host shares the right answer. SALT is an hour-long television program capturing inspirational lectures and panel discussions with well-known Ukrainians who are taking action to effect positive change. Square One World Media also continues to partner with The Bible Today. Currently, The Bible Today is producing five radio programs, each with a different host, audience, and focus, but all designed to share Christian perspectives and biblical principles. Together with these two ministry partners on the ground in Ukraine, Square One World Media is infiltrating the airwaves and online world with Christ-centered content that is creative and impactful. Help us reach a country in crisis with the reassuring message of the gospel. Learn more by visiting squareoneworldmedia.com forward slash Ukrainian. It's not a diary. 